I bring you greetings from the General Assembly Office of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. My name is the Right Reverend Professor Joseph Ubriyabua Manti, the moderator of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. I would like to just share with you today a simple Easter message. Now, for us as Christians, this week has been a very, very important week for us. It's perhaps the most important week of the Christian calendar. And why do I say this? I say this because the reason for which Jesus was born is shown during this particular week. During this week, from Monday to Friday, we reenact the passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, where he suffered so much for us from betrayal to Gethsemane uh, to the cross. He suffered so much for us. He died. But then when he died on fr Friday, that did not end there. He also resurrected on Sunday. I just want to share with you just a few points about our celebration of this Easter. Now, the Easter is so important to us, as I've already indicated, such that we Christians are not happy when people take the whole Easter festivities on a different tone where they just go and enjoy themselves. It's a very reflective moment for us because we are thinking about the passion, the suffering, and the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Now, this Easter actually originates from ancient Israel where when the Lord God Almighty wanted to deliver the Israelites from Egypt, God decided that the Egyptians would have to suffer because they had really kept the Israelites in slavery. And when God wanted to deliver them, the Egyptians, the pharaohs, would not allow this. So what God did was that God said that in, on one particular night, on the night of escape, he would send an angel that will come around the Israelite community. And what the angel was going to look for was the blood of lambs on the doorposts of the Israelites. And that any time the angel would see the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, he would pass over. So the angel will enter a house and kill somebody if there was no blood on their doorposts. And that is what God made them celebrate or commemorate as their Passover. And so at Easter when we are reminding ourselves of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are reminding ourselves of the importance of the blood of Calvary. That any one of us that believes in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that this blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. The Lord has promised to pass over us, to forgive us. That in judgment, he will set us free. Because we cannot set our own selves free. But he forgives us because of what Jesus, our Lord, has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. And so this is so important to us. Actually, it is the beginning or the first step in the Christian faith to recognize the importance of the death, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. That once we believe that this blood was shed for us, if you believe it personally, the Lord will pass over you. The second understanding of it has to do with the concept of what we call atonement. That is to say, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ atones for our sins. In ancient Israel, there was a whole day of atonement, which was a day in the whole year where blood was, of, of animals were shed. And every year they had to go through this. But when Christ died, he died for us once and for all, according to the book of Hebrews, that we will be forgiven once and for all, that the blood of Jesus will atone for our sins. That because of this death of our Lord Jesus Christ, our sins have been atoned for. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And that is why I keep saying that Good Friday is so important for us. It's a solemn moment for us. But of course, it's also a day of joy 
because it's the day where we commemorate, we reenact, if you like, the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We know that we are forgiven. We know that we are set free. That moment from Jesus, we receive a pardon. Some people think that this is too simple a gospel, but God has chosen the simplicity of this gospel to save the world. If we would just believe that Jesus died for our sins, we are forgiven, we will be set free. There is power in that blood. But as we talk about it in those spiritual terms, we ask ourselves, what does it also mean for our lives? I just want to share a few other things uh, with all of us. The first one is with the concept of commitment to Jesus in thick and thin. I do recall that during the Passion Week, Peter denied Jesus three times. But then G Peter came back and Jesus forgave him. Peter had said that, Lord, I will go with you through thick and thin. Even if all the others deny you, I will never deny you. But when things got tougher, Peter denied Jesus in, the, in front of some little girl. I just want to commend to all of us how important it is to stay with Jesus through thick and thin. There are some of us who praise and worship Jesus. We sing Hosanna, Hosanna. But when things get tougher, we deny Jesus publicly. Sometimes not directly, but indirectly. Let us be properly committed to Jesus. What I like about Peter is that even though he failed Jesus at a certain point, yet he could repent and return to Jesus. And he became the leader of the disciples. But then there was also another disciple called Judas, who also failed Jesus. He betrayed Jesus, but he did not come back to repent. It was too late for him. Don't be like Judas. Be like Peter. Even if you fall down on your face, get up and go back to Jesus. He has more grace. He always gives us a second chance. Let us be more committed to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are some of us in our various fields of work, could be in politics, in education, in our, in our studies, in whatever we are doing, and we are among our friends. When we are among them, we are afraid to let them know that we stand for Jesus. Let everybody know that we are committed to our Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing that I would like for us to learn from the Easter event is the whole concept of self-control. Self-control has an important value that we should all have. There are people who have come into the Christian faith with the thinking that once I have come to Jesus, everything must work out very well for me, everything must be good, everything must be nice, everything um, must be, make me happy, and so on. It's a lie. It is really a lie. Jesus went through passion. There are moments, dark moments, in the life of every serious Christian. Anybody who wants to grow seriously on the spiritual ladder, there will be some dark moments in your life. The important thing is to learn about self-control. When, when they were beating Jesus, when they were slapping him, he still stood firm in what he was and what he believed. Let us learn about self-control. During this period, we do fast, and Christians have been fasting for 40 days in Lent during this period. It's, the idea is to learn self-control, and that self-control is an important value. When Christians don't learn, self, don't learn about self-control and don't live in, in self-control, that is why we give ourselves to various lusts and evil things. And once lusts and evil things take control over us, our communities will be destroyed. Please, let us learn how to bring our bodies under self-control. Let us learn how to bring our minds under self-control. Self-control is a value that we learn during the Passion Week. Another thing that we learn during the Passion Week is the concept of sacrifice. I think we all are aware of the sacrifice of Abraham when he wanted to sacrifice his son Isaac. And God said that, now I know, I know that you have the fear of God in you. And so God provided a lamp for Abraham to use for the sacrifice. Now God has now provided an eternal, an eternal lamp for sacrifice for all of us, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus was sacrificed for us. I want to tell you something, that beyond the redemption, beyond the atonement, beyond the forgiveness, 
One thing that will make any community, any family, any organization, any group of people to grow has to do with the understanding of sacrifice. Somebody must sacrifice for something to go on well. For example, if you are a leader in a third world country, in a developing country, and you, you don't want to sacrifice your good taste, the people who come after you will never have a better community, we will never have a better Ghana, we will never have a better Africa. If our leaders do not choose to sacrifice, I'm talking about sacrifice in terms of how they spend money, in terms of what they drive, in terms of how much money they, they take home. Because somebody must sacrifice for Ghana to do well. And it must start with the leadership. Jesus sacrificed. And through that sacrifice, we have salvation. In almost every developed country, some people had had to sacrifice for the countries to be where they are now. And I want to challenge all leaders. Let's just start from the churches. Pastors must sacrifice. Sometimes congregation members are in pain. They are suffering. They don't have jobs. But several pastors have so many cars. And, and they must sacrifice. They must give some away. They must sell some and help church members. Sacrifice is an important concept that we must learn. There are times when people in leadership think that some money have come, so they just want to enjoy it. They are enjoying it too early. In Ghana here, some people are enjoying wealth too early, particularly those in political positions. They must sacrifice for Ghana to be better. Church leaders, reverend ministers, politicians, um, people in corporate Ghana, must learn to sacrifice for the companies, for communities to be better. I plead with Ghanaians. I plead with all leaders. We must learn to sacrifice. And the last thing that I want to share with you is the whole idea of hope. Jesus died on fri Friday, but Sunday was coming. And on Sunday, Jesus rose from the dead by the power of God. The stones were rolled away from the tomb. When the disciples went, the tomb was empty. And this tells us that death does not have the final word. And I like the saying that people have been saying these days that it is never over until it is over. Jesus has conquered death. And the only thing that anybody can threaten you with in life is death. But once you know that with Jesus you have eternal life beyond death, you are safer. But the other thing about this is the fact that we should never give up in life on anything. I saw written on a vehicle that enemies are not good. And I liked it so much because sometimes people are afraid so much of their enemies, they turn their enemies into gods. They are not God. Until God has spoken the last word, no human being has the last word on your life. There are times even when people may be thinking that they don't have anything, they don't have parents, their parents are dead, or their parents are sick, their parents don't have this, they don't have that, and they, they, they just think morbidly about themselves. But I have come here to share with you about the Easter hope, that because there is always a Sunday coming after the Friday. There's always a better future ahead of you if you can keep trusting in God. Never give up in life. Nil disparandum. Never give up in life. And another thing that is associated with the concept of hope is this, that in our country right now, sometimes I have a feeling that the country is suffering from some social depression. People have been saying so many negative things about ourselves. We say so many negative things to ourselves. May we Ghanaians stop speaking negative things to ourselves and start speaking positively to ourselves. Because if we start speaking things positive into ourselves, we will then think positively and our lives will be better. There are times when you think that you are just critiquing one government or another government, one party or another party. We are just spoiling ourselves. We are just bringing ourselves under social depression, which must stop. I pray to God that every Ghanaian will wake up and shake themselves up 
on Easter Sunday and say that I am going to be a new Ghanaian. I, Ghana will be a new place. We will be a newer people. And that we will speak positive things about ourselves. That Ghana is a good place. Ghana is a better place. God will make us better. We will work to make a better Ghana. And the leaders must work to make Ghana a better place. And if we think positively, Ghana will be a better place for all of us. I wish all of us a happy Easter. May we all, as we look with the resurrection hope, renew our lives and speak positively about ourselves, about our nation, about our churches, about our leaders, and about ourselves, and even about your own families. May God bless us all. Happy Easter. Amen.